to the virtual podium. We will bring it to you live. It's time for a handle on the news. Bill, take it away. And uh, good morning. Uh, yeah, we have a uh, interesting morning to say the least. Uh, uh, just uh, as we start, hello, Jen. Hello, Wayne. Hello, Alex. Hello, uh, Tyler. And Dave is here, too. Okay, we're all here, and uh, we're waiting for President Zelensky of Ukraine to address Congress, both houses of Congress, and uh, he's going to do it via, via a video link. Uh, he is scheduled for 6 o'clock, and I'm guessing that he's not going to be very late on this one. You've got all of Congress sitting there uh, in the chamber uh, waiting for him to speak. Nothing like being late to piss someone off like this. So uh, while we are waiting, uh, Wayne, I just said good morning to you. Good morning. And you were in the uh, the room? I was right there. Uh, the oh, I didn't see you. All right. While we are waiting for President Zelensky to start addressing Congress, uh, let's talk a little bit about what is expected that he is going to do. And then whenever he starts, of course, uh, we'll interrupt what I have to say because... Uh, I guess he's more important than I am, damn it. Well, certainly today he is. Uh, so so yesterday he was. Yes, yeah, that's true. And probably that's tomorrow. True. Yeah, as much as I don't want to admit it, that's uh, very much the case. So, can I, can I make a quick dig at somebody? Sure. Uh, you were talking about he will probably be on time and right. have all of Congress waiting. I just want to say there's some presidents who don't seem to feel uh, <laughs> that they need to be on time. Uh, uh, that's true, speak. but this is a different situation. I know. Very, very different. Uh, so, what is uh, President Zelensky expected to do? Well, first and foremost, I think he is uh, going to thank Congress and thank the President for the $13.5 billion uh, aid package that's uh, going to Ukraine that was just signed. And that was, uh, uh, well, it, it wasn't unexpected, but the numbers were unexpected. I mean, it just kept on climbing. It was like a poker game. Uh, where you know, I'll uh, I'll call and raise it. No, no, I'll call and raise it. It just keeps on going up to where it reaches astronomical figures. I mean, thirteen and a half billion dollars is no no small figure, uh, and no one seems to be opposed to that. And then I think uh, that President Zelensky is going to once again call for the no-fly zone. That has been one of his most adamant positions, which. Uh, is kind of interesting if you look at uh, what the experts are saying, and that is a no-fly zone, number one, is going to truly piss off uh, Putin. I mean, that is, and he has said, that's a line in the sand. I mean, you cross that, we're at war with uh, any country enforcing a no-fly zone because that means if uh, the Russian aircraft go into Ukraine airport uh, air, airspace, uh, then uh, the countries that are enforcing that uh, no-fly zone have to shoot down Russian aircraft. So there's no choice. And so everybody's... This is why the entire world is pulling back and going, no, 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 we're not going to touch that. That's not going to happen to the chagrin of uh, President Zelensky. The other reason is that it's not going to do all that much. Ukraine has very sophisticated anti-aircraft weaponry supplied by uh, NATO countries uh, and uh, the, we the European Union across the board. And uh, they're doing a rather good job of hitting those aircraft. And as I said yesterday, and, and as we know, it's not the aircraft that are doing the damage. It's not the tanks that are doing the damage because Ukrainians have tons of anti-tank weaponry. Those Stinger missiles that you see carried on the shoulders of Ukrainian shoulder uh, on the shoulders of Ukrainian soldiers, and then uh, you have the javelin uh, again, uh, uh, handheld or on the shoulder held uh, uh, missiles that just wipe out tanks, wipe out airplanes that begin anywhere near, uh, and they're very sophisticated. So it's not like uh, aircraft can uh, swing around and, and evade those. Those are pretty good. And then the big one is the artillery. And a no-fly zone does nothing about artillery. And that is the weapon of choice that's being used to do the ultimate damage, the major damage that's uh, going on. So I, I think other than the no-fly zone, 
Uh, I don't think much is going to happen. Is he going to ask for troops? I Well, that's never going to happen. Is he going to ask for additional sanctions? Probably. There have been four rounds of sanctions so far. And they're just keeping uh, their here we go. Okay, here we go with President Zelensky. Uh, Stand by and look listen in. in. This is, I believe, Nancy Pelosi about to introduce the Ukrainian president. And all the Congress standing. Standing uh, for this. And cheering. Zelensky's got his hand over his heart, kind of saying thank you, thank you. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Madam Ambassador, who is with us this morning. Madam Ambassador. <laughs> Everybody knows who he is and why he's there. She has to have a photo up. Ambassador Makarova. <laughs> Mr. President, it is my honor to present to you the Congress of the United States, which has great respect and admiration and appreciation for your courageous leadership. Members of Congress, I have the high privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you the President of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky. Slava Ukraina! Slava Ukraina! <laughs> My colleagues, Slava Ukraina! Slava Ukraina! <laughs> Glory to heroes. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker, members of the Congress, ladies and gentlemen, Americans, friends, I am proud to greet you from Ukraine, from our capital city of Kyiv, a city that is under missile and airstrikes from Russian troops every day. But it doesn't give up. And we have not even thought about it for a second. Just like many other cities and communities in our beautiful country, which found themselves in the worst war since World War II. I have the honor to greet you on behalf of the Ukrainian people, brave and freedom-loving people who for eight years have been resisting the Russian aggression. Those who give their best sons and daughters to stop this full-scale Russian invasion. Right now, the destiny of our country is being decided. The destiny of our people, whether Ukrainians will be free, whether they will be able to preserve their democracy. Russia has attacked not just us, not just our land, not just our cities. It went on a brutal offensive against our values, basic human values. It threw tanks and planes against our freedom, against our right to live free in our own country, choosing our own future, against our desire for happiness, against our national dreams, just like the same dreams you have, you Americans, just like anyone else in the United States. I remember your national memorial in Rushmore, the faces of your prominent presidents, those who laid the foundation of the United States of America as it is today, democracy, independence, freedom, and care for everyone, for every person, for everyone who works diligently, who lives honestly, who respects the law. We in Ukraine want the same for our people. All that is normal part of your own life. Ladies and gentlemen, 
friends, Americans. In your great history, you have pages that would allow you to understand Ukrainians. Understand us now, when you need it right now, when we need you right now. Remember Pearl Harbor, terrible morning of December 7, 1941, when your sky was black from the planes attacking you. Just remember it. Remember September the 11th, a terrible day in 20, 2001, when evil tried to turn your cities, independent territories, in battlefields, when innocent people were attacked, attacked from air, yes. Just like no one else expected it, you could not stop it. Our country experienced the same every day. Right now, at this moment, every night, for three weeks now, various Ukrainian cities, Odessa, Ekhati, Chernihiv, Insume, Zitomir, Enviv, Mariupol, and Dnipro, Russia has turned the Ukrainian sky into a source of death for thousands of people. Russian troops have already fired nearly 1,000 missiles at Ukraine. Countless bombs, they use drones to kill us with precision. This is a terror that Europe has not seen, has not seen for 80 years, and we are asking for a reply, for an answer uh, to this. Uh, terror from the whole world. Is this a lot to ask for? To create a no-fly zone, zone over Ukraine to save people. Is this too much to ask? Humanitarian no-fly zone. Something that Ukraine, uh, that Russia would not be able to terrorize our free cities. If this is too much to ask, we offer an alternative. You know what kind of defense systems we need, S-300 and other similar systems. You know how much depends on the battlefield, on the ability to use aircraft, powerful, strong air uh, aviation to protect our people, our freedom, our land, aircraft that can help Ukraine, help Europe. And you know that they exist and you have them, but they are on earth, not in, Ukraine, in the Ukrainian sky. They do not defend our people. I have a dream. These words are known to each of you today. I can say, I have a need. I need to protect uh, our sky. I need your decision, your help, which means exactly the same, the same you feel when you hear the words, I have a dream. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, Ukraine is grateful to the United States for its overwhelming support for everything that your government and your people have done for us, for weapons and ammunition, for training, for finances, for leadership in the free world, which helps us to pressure the aggressor economically. I'm grateful to President Biden for his personal involvement, for his sincere commitment to the defense of Ukraine and democracy all over the world. I am grateful to you for the resolution which recognizes all those who commit crimes against Ukraine, against the Ukrainian people as war criminals. However, now, it is true, in the darkest time for our country, for the whole Europe, I call on you to do more. New packages of sanctions are needed constantly, every week, until the Russian military machine stops. Restrictions are needed for everyone on whom this unjust regime is based. We propose that the United States sanction all politicians in the Russian Federation who remain in their offices and do not uh, 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 cut ties with those who are responsible for the aggression against Ukraine. From State Duma's members to the last official who has lack of morale to break the state terror. All American companies must leave Russia from their market, leave their market immediately because it is flooded with our blood. 
Ladies and gentlemen, members of Congress, please take the lead. If you have companies in your district who um, finance the Russian military machine leaving business in Russia, you should put pressure. I am asking to make sure that the Russians do not receive a single penny that they use to destroy people in Ukraine. The destruction of our country, the destruction of Europe. All American ports should be closed for uh, Russian Good. We are. Um, peace is more important than income, and we have to defend this principle in the whole world. We already became part of the anti-war coalition, a big anti-war coalition that unites many countries, dozens of countries. Those who reacted to, in principle, to President Putin's decision to invade our country, but we need to move on and do more. We need to create new tools to respond quickly and stop the war, the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine, which began on February 24th. And it would be fair if it ended in a day, in 24 hours, that evil would be punished immediately. To, today, the world does not have such tools. The war of the past have prompted our predecessors to create institutions that should protect us from war, but they unfortunately don't work. We see it, you see it, so we need new ones, new institutions, new alliances, and we offer them. We propose to create an association, you 24, United for Peace, a union of responsible countries that have the strength and cons consciousness to stop conflict immediately, provide all the necessary assistance in 24 hours, if necessary, even weapons, if necessary, sanctions, humanitarian support, political support, finances, everything you need to keep the peace and quickly save the world, to save life. In addition, such associations, such unions provide assistance to those who are experiencing natural disasters, man-made disasters, who felt victims to a humanitarian crisis or epidemic. Remember how difficult it was for the world to do the simplest thing, just to give vaccines, vaccines against COVID to save lives, to prevent new strains. The world spent months, years doing things like that much faster to make sure there are no human losses, no victims. Ladies and gentlemen, Americans, if such alliance would exist today, that is U24, we would be able to save thousands of lives in our country, in many countries of the world, those who need peace, those who suffer inhumane destruction. I ask you to watch one video, video of what the Russian troops did in our country, in our land. We have to stop it. We must prevent it, preventively destroy every single aggressor who seeks to subjugate other nations. Please watch the video. children intercut with shots of buildings being blown up etc yeah. now it says this is a murder we're continuing to see footage of war and it looks like they're not cutting back to any of the happy images anymore no, they have now moved into full-on people, cry people crying medical personnel attending to wounded people laying wounded in the streets People being carried on stretchers, Children. little tiny babies being wrapped uh, for protection. Oh, a dead 
person being put into what looks like a quickly dug grave. Well, we know that there are uh, mass graves because yes. they don't have uh, time or the wherewithal to bury individual people because it's thousands of people. But also, it's, child it's, after it's child. all, and now you're seeing graphic uh, stuff that the news outlets are not putting on in the United States. And uh, this is, uh, geez, this is number one, very graphic. Number two, uh, just tugs at the heartstrings. This is very well produced. Uh, and, you know, to evoke I mean, these shots of little kids. Oh, my God. Suffering. Bodies wrapped in blankets next to stroll, empty strollers. Yeah, this is... Uh, Refugees waiting. Just some it's of the, the same image, kinds of images over right. and over. It's alternating between uh, a lot of images of wounded children and sad children. And buildings. Buildings being, being destroyed, destroyed. Injured and, and people being put into makeshift graves. Yeah. Now it says, close the sky over Ukraine. Yeah, I wanna, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, why Zelensky has made such a huge deal okay, about this. And now he's back on. And in the end, to some it's up. Today, today it's not enough to be the leader of the nation. Today it takes to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. Peace in your country doesn't depend anymore only on you and your people. It depends on those next to you, on those who are strong. Strong doesn't mean weak. Strong is brave and ready to fight for the life of his citizens and citizens of the world. For human rights, for freedom, for the right to live decently and to die when your time comes. And not when it's wanted by someone else, by your neighbor. Today, the Ukrainian people are defending not only Ukraine. We are fighting for the values of Europe and the world, sacrificing our lives in the name of the future. That's why today the American people are helping not just Ukraine, but Europe and the world to keep the planet alive, to keep justice in history. Now I'm almost 45 years old. Today my age stopped when the hearts of more than 100 children stopped beating. I see no sense in life if it cannot stop the death. And this is my main mission as the leader of my people, great Ukrainians. And as the leader of my niche, I am addressing the President Biden you are the leader of the nation, of your nation. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. Thank you. Slava Ukraine. Great. Glory to Ukraine. Another standing ovation, of course, uh, with the uh, applause. Uh, and uh, that, that was a fascinating uh, speech. Uh, it uh, was. And uh, we're going to talk about it. Wayne is joining me, and of course, Jennifer is here. And it's just uh, a, a few things that came to mind immediately. Uh, one of them was just what we just saw. Uh, he's speaking in Ukrainian right up to this video which was extraordinarily done i mean this is about as professional as and slick and heart tugging at your uh, heartstrings and just uh, it's it's hard to watch that because these are graphic shots of kids who have died that were in the hospital with these horrific wounds uh happy kids because this is the way ukraine was and should be and also the uh, video of the, the utter destruction of uh, the city 
uh, of, uh, I assume, Maripol and uh, in Kiev and a few other cities uh, out there. They didn't delineate which they were. Uh, and uh, he spoke Ukrainian, the video, and then he went into English, which uh, I thought was fascinating. The other thing I want to point out, this is what we knew. Uh, he was going to continue calling for the, um, the no-fly zone. Uh, did you notice he didn't talk about tanks or artillery? And military experts are saying that's the stuff that really works. So why would he push the no-fly zone, the no-fly zone, and say it's the, uh, it's the airplanes that are killing us? It's that aircraft. Some missiles are launched, but nothing like the artillery. He wants a confrontation between the West and Russia. It is that simple. There is no chance that troops from NATO will ever go into Ukraine. However, I think he believes that the no-fly zone is very different, and he concentrated on that, concentrated on that. Uh, to uh, Actually, uh, as military experts, it says it's not that big a deal. I found that fascinating. And there's no other reason other than let's do a confrontation. Because if he gets NATO, the Western world, Europe, to go against Russia, then the war is over. It's done. Putin stops because there's no chance that Putin could ever prevail in a war against Europe and NATO. Impossible. However, you know, what if he unleashes the bomb? And that's the fear. Okay, well, this is, I was, I was waiting because, yes, is there any way he could prevail? I, I agree with you. I just, I'm glad I'm not hearing you say he would never, Putin would never try. Oh, I think he would to stay in power. Uh, later on, I have a story about uh, is Putin close to being uh, over, overturned? Will there be a coup? Uh, probably not, and I'll get into it, but it's as close as it's ever come right now. Uh, and that's one of the reasons the economic sanctions, and of course, Zelensky called for more and more and more sanctions uh, across the board. Uh, punitive, prohibitive sanctions that just shuts down the economy. Look what's happening in Russia, or look what's not happening in Russia. The stock market has not opened since the first day of the invasion. And why would that happen? Because Putin can actually do a reasonable job of convincing Russians that the sanctions aren't uh, as, uh, as serious as they are. Uh, how many people are really affected are a, a given number of people, but it's not all of Russia. And the propaganda just moves forward, and they're very good about that. Uh, Putin controls the propaganda. If the stock market opens, and it will tank, I mean, it will collapse. There's no way to explain that. There's no way to convince Russia that it is not happening. That's true. However, and, and, and we, I think, agree that we don't think it's possible for Putin to so completely control information in Russia that people don't have some sense of what's really happening. But the government messaging over there is a completely different narrative, sure. which is the Ukrainian people have been engaging in a genocide against Russians, and what we are doing is defending Russians against that Nazi-level aggression on the part of the Ukrainians. And what that allows them to do for the people who can't get enough information to understand that that's BS, the sanctions, the hardships that they're creating, are viewed differently. They're viewed as, well, this is happening because... Ukraine are murderous Nazis, and the evil United States are helping them. And so if you're a citizen and that's what you believe, you're not going to be mad at Putin. If you buy that line of crap, you're not going to be mad at Putin at all. You're going to be mad at Ukraine and the United States. Yeah. And so the idea of something happening within the Russian populace, the, the whole point of the propaganda is to make sure that doesn't happen. But there are holes in the propaganda. Yes. This is not North Korea. There are enough holes and there's enough information out there. And when you talk about, uh, just a quick historical note, when you talk about arguing that uh, the denazification and it's Nazis, neo-Nazis, that are in fact uh, practicing genocide against uh, the Russians, that is uh, not new. 
because, for example, in World War II, there was massive extermination of Russians and Russian Jews uh, when the Nazis invaded uh, Nazis invaded Russia. And so there's the history. Look at what the Nazis did to us before. I mean, it was, I mean, millions and millions of Russians died uh, during the war. I mean, the brutality of Russian troops moving in, uh, or uh, Nazi troops, you know, keep in mind the Germans made it to within 70 miles of Moscow during World War II. It was that close. And so that rings, uh, that resonates. Look at the Nazis. Look what happened before. And we have to save our people. I think your point is uh, absolutely on point, uh, Wayne, uh, about that. So the propaganda is, uh, it's, well, they know what they're doing, propaganda today. But look at what Zelensky just did. That's what I want to talk about, because I think that what he did to humanize this and to make Americans realize what it feels like to be in his country we can see that horrific video. It pulls at our heartstrings. But when you start telling us, imagine having 9-11 every single day. All of us can go back to that day and remember the horror that we felt, the uncertainty, how scared we were to be attacked by somebody else. And I thought that that was a really good move on him to oh. say, I have a dream to cite Pearl Harbor. All to of those references. Mount Rushmore he got I in know, there. It was across the board in terms of references, and if if I remember correctly, because we are watching this and there was so much going on in the video, was there one scene, and tell me if I'm wrong on on, on that one, where a kid is running across the, the park with an American flag? Did I see that correctly? I couldn't tell, I I couldn't tell that it was an American flag. I thought it was it definitely was. a kid running through a park holding the flag. Yeah, and I thought it was... Uh, it, it, and maybe I missed that uh, because I didn't. I put my glasses down for a moment. Uh, but I, when you look at this, and that was the astounding part, everything else was pretty much expected. Uh, certainly the call for sanctions. Certainly we knew the call for the no-fly zone because that's been going on since uh, the beginning of the war. I mean, that's something that they wanted to do. And my take on it is he wants a war between Russia and and between uh, the European community and NATO. Because, the, as again, uh, any attack on NATO is an attack on all members of NATO, which means the U.S. and means virtually every country. And when you look at a map of Ukraine, uh, there are only uh, two, maybe three countries that are not members of NATO that are on the border of Ukraine. All the other countries that border Ukraine are members of NATO. And so he, he, so we have people on the border, according to him, the way he thinks, I think. And that is there will be an instant invasion by NATO. Ukrainians will join that fight uh, to take on uh, the Russian forces and Belarus forces, uh, clearly. I can't think of anybody else that would get involved. Uh, in uh, that war. So it would be those two countries, and Belarus is a, a puppet uh, government of, um, of, of Russia. Uh, it would, I have to tell you, that's uh, no surprises except uh, the propaganda value, and not in a negative way, just a brilliant way of addressing Congress. Well, it's hard when I think a lot of us have become jaded when we watch war coverage. We see this footage, that video was horrific, but it's not your child. It's not your mother. It's not your father, that kind of thing. What he did, though, was humanize it as an American and brought it back home and to make you feel, hey, remember how you felt on 9-11? Remember how you felt when Pearl Harbor happened? And he invokes those feelings, which a lot of us may not have had up until now. But when you bring it back home like that, and they, it, it's a basically, hey, remember when that happened to you? It's happening to us on a daily basis. That's poignant. That's powerful. And uh, he uh, also, uh, and again, to your point, uh, I want to extend it a little bit. Uh, he refers historically to when the United States was the leader of the free world. Yeah. It was the United States yeah. that controlled the Western world, and it was. After World War II, for example, 
the yeah, U.S. owned yeah, literally most of the world uh, except know, for uh, Russia uh, and those uh, countries uh, that absorbed uh, Russia uh, in their sphere of influence. And he invokes that and uh, asks, please go back to that point. Please do this. You're doing it not on behalf of Ukrainians, not on behalf of uh, Russia, of uh, of Europe, not on behalf of America, but on behalf of the entire world. It's your responsibility, America. Please do that. Almost arguing that if you don't, it's an utter failure on uh, the part of uh, what... Uh, uh, what's going on right now with the United States not going to the extent that it is, and Europe not going to the extent. Do you want to take just a second, uh, Kevin McCarthy, this is lobbyists yeah. reacting to Zelensky's yeah. address. Yeah. Yeah. The entire time President Biden always said it would be the sanctions afterwards. And then when the sanctions came, he said it would take months to work. The Ukrainian people cannot wait months. The world cannot wait months if we sit by and watch innocent people being murdered. With that, let me turn it over to our witness. Thank you. This is Steve Cooper.